Hi there, and welcome back. This is Pixel Lazy. I am recording my flight around the world, one leg at a time, in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. This is Lazy Airlines Flight 105 with service from Port Hardy, British Columbia, on the north end of Vancouver Island. And today we're headed up to Prince Rupert, British Columbia, up on the mid-central coast of British Columbia. Looks like it's going to be a clear day. It's going to disengage my parking brake and prepare for takeoff. This is the sixth leg of my trip. All the other legs are available as videos on this channel. Started off in Edmonton, Alberta. Traveled to Jasper. Flew on over to Golden, BC. Then down to Kelowna. Over to Vancouver. Up to Port Hardy. And now we're off to Prince Rupert as we travel up the coast and head towards Alaska. Just did a southbound departure, but we've got to travel north today, so just taking off over in the beautiful forests at the edge of the strait here. We're going to do some flying over top of, of the water for a while. And then travel up the coast, which I think is a... Vancouver Center Lazy Lima 105 is type Cessna Skyhawk, one mile southeast of Charlie Yankee Zulu Tango. Request flight following. Lazy Lima 105 Vancouver Center. Squawk 2315. I think it's a beautiful sort of... Squawk 2315 Lazy Lima 105. Mountain coastline. So, we'll Lazy see. Lima 105 radar contact, one mile northeast of Charlie Yankee Zulu Tango, 1,200 feet. Altimeter tree zero decimal one two. Never actually been this part of Copy Lazy Lima 105. British Columbia, so we'll see what it looks like. As, I, as I've been traveling, it's just been the last couple of legs that I've been visiting places that I haven't actually been in real life, so the first four legs are are locations that were very familiar to me. I had a lot to say about those and a lot of memories are wrapped around them. But as I head up into the uh, into the north of Canada along the coast here, these are new places. So it's as much uh, exploration for me as it is a, as a trip. going to record bits and pieces of this, so I'll check in and out as I travel along my, my journey. I'm about 30 minutes into the flight, I'm trying to follow the flight path as closely as I can. As you can see from the flight computer, I'm just sort of just a few hundred feet from my navigation line, which is the pink line on the on the flight computer. The wind tends to blow me off course a little bit. There's a little bit of wind up here, especially as I've just entered the cloudy area. Some low line clouds. I'm cruising along just over 7,000 feet. And I'm probably a couple hundred kilometers up the coast of BC right now. A lot of, kind of meandering coastline, a lot of little islands, a lot of big islands. Just some sort of general coastal mountains poking through the clouds. But I've got a couple more hours left on this flight, so. I'm just going to continue along my way. Hopefully I don't run into anything unexpected. <laughs> it's 
started entering into this cloud bank, these low-lying clouds, and uh, in lieu of dropping down and kind of flying below them, I thought I'd try and get up above the cloud layer. Seems like it uh, would be a smoother flight. And the, uh, the weather systems in this simulator are sometimes just as interesting as the, uh, as the land. So, I don't think I'll mind flying above the clouds and looking down on those clouds just as much as looking down on the landscape. Trying not to climb too quickly here. Maintaining about a five degree slope as I'm climbing up. Careful not to stall out. coastline really is quite magnificent if you think about it. It's essentially just the, I assume, sort of the geological result of some really low-lying foothills that didn't quite make it above sea level. So you've got essentially hilltops poking up out of the, the ocean for hundreds of kilometers up the coast. And some of those are mountains and some of them are just barely little rises out of the water and then worn down by erosion over time. It's created this really sort of convoluted but visually interesting landscape. Starting to ice up here. Must be getting up into the colder temperatures up north. Gonna have to figure out my heating system when I log out of this in a few minutes. Stop this video and Try and figure that out. Check back in a little bit. Still haven't quite figured out my heating systems because I'm being sort of tossed around in the, the weather here. Can't really let go of the joystick, otherwise I start to stall out or gain some serious airspeed. I'm gonna have to figure out what I'm doing wrong. If uh, anybody has any advice on how to uh, control your aircraft when going through this kind of weather comment below. <laughs> I'm, I'm open to some input at this point. I assume I'll be hitting this type of weather again. Because as you probably know, if you've been watching along, I've been uh, just doing live weather. The live weather is a simulated, simulated weather based on weather data, real world weather data for the location you're flying through. So clouds might not look exactly like this, but this is an approximation of what the weather would look like if I was actually here. 
according to available weather data. And from the ground, this would just look like some pillowy broken clouds, but in this altitude, it's really quite an interesting, beautiful sight. spent the last 15 minutes or so sort of fighting with the winds and clouds and I ultimately decided that I was just going to try and climb back up to altitude and get out of it. The clouds seemed to get thicker and messier, so I assume that's the right approach. I'm trying to be maintaining a steady climb here. Couple other people flying around in this mess. Another Cessna 172 parked somewhere back there. Past an airport. I'm not sure what town it was in. Um, I think it was on my list when I was looking for stopovers. It would have made for a shorter flight in this two and a half hour long haul up the coast, of which we're about third of the way through right now, but I think doing a couple of these long haul flights when I have the time will pay off in the long run. So not much to see but clouds right now. As far as clouds go, can't complain too much. So another 10 minutes. Still scooting along here. I burned a bunch of fuel trying to get above the clouds, and well, this has been a bit of a lesson in aerodynamics. I uh, kept kind of hitting a ceiling of about 7,500 feet, uh, and then I just couldn't climb anymore. The plane kept stalling out. So I'm a little worried that I'm going to burn up all my fuel just trying to climb up and uh, won't have enough to get to my destination. So I am tackling plan B, which is to drop down below the clouds if I can ever find that. I'm not exactly sure where that is, but uh, we're pretty much on course. Probably flying over the ocean right now, right along the coast. Coming up on an island here of some kind. There we go. Really low lying clouds. I think we might have to do a low altitude flight for the rest of this trip because I have been fighting with these clouds for the last half hour. So that has been definitely a challenge, definitely a bit of a lesson. Learning experience for me, for sure. If anybody has any tips, again, <laughs> uh, comment below. I'm not a professional pilot, I'm not a pilot at all, just a guy playing flight simulator and ideally I don't want to crash on a remote British Columbia Island so I found something of a happy place um, just below 2,000 feet altitude and now I'm just gonna try and follow the coastline I have to kind of steer between some of these islands, if only because I think these islands have some mountains on them that might be just around my cruising altitude. So rather than burn off the rest of my gas and struggle through the clouds, I'm going to impromptu plot a course up and along following some of these coastline 
there's a narrow strait running between a fairly substantial peninsula or island of some kind dead ahead and we're gonna locate that visually and track it hopefully the rest of the way to our destination and hopefully I don't run out of fuel. But again, some gorgeous landscape. All up the coast of British Columbia. Here on the west coast of Canada. Just taking a moment to enjoy the rolling coastal mountains. This looks like a river. It's actually a, a strait between the mainland and an island off to my left. It's probably only a couple hundred feet across. The low clouds, kind of ethereal fog. It's just uh, really quite amazing. I think a lot of people load up flight sim and fly around famous, familiar places and miss out on things like this. Right now I'm about 50 miles south of Prince Rupert, BC. I have about 16% of my fuel left. After flying a little over two hours, starting at about 50% fuel, so I should be okay. But I imagine we're gonna land in the red probably in the next half hour. Wish me luck. The fog broke and uh, I seem to have found my destination. I saw the flashing lights of the airport before I saw the airport indicator pop onto the screen. And assuming I get clearance to land, I'm just on my final approach here to Prince Rupert, British Columbia. The landscape around here has been insanely beautiful. Certainly had no expectations about what I'd see when I got here. And I will admit, I was pleasantly surprised. This is 
beautiful ethereal place when the fog is hanging low over it. I think in my short time playing this game and knowing that a lot of people just load up a familiar place and fly around it and look for landmarks that they know. Um, setting out on a world tour where you never know what you'll find. Generic one kilo tango, Charlie, Charlie Yankee, Yankee Pink, Romeo, Romeo traffic, traffic, Lazy Lima, one zero five three miles southeast, seven hundred feet inbound to land runway one tree. Guess I'm gonna have to do a, a fly around here. Land from the other direction. I guess what I'd say is that if you're going to play this game, don't just fly to places that you expect or that you are familiar with. You know, already I'm only six flights into this trip and I'm finding things, even in my own country, that are just blowing my mind as far as the simulation goes. For my approach, I'm using the on-screen navigation aids. These are projections that give you a, a flight path, teach you how to land properly. I'm not a pilot, so assistance right now, especially around landing, is helpful. I don't think of them as cheating as much as I think of it as uh, a learning tool. Some of you may argue with that, but hopefully, hopefully when I'm about 25 flights in, I can turn this off. I have a little bit more comfort with my approach directions, the flight path, the land, some of the rules around landing. I have no problem taking off, no problem cruising. Still, as you've seen from this video, a few things to learn about weather conditions that are less than favorable. But again, it's all about the experience. Switched my cockpit view so I can line up my approach. Charlie Yankee Papa Romeo traffic lazy Lima 105 is on final runway one tree to land. Luckily this looks like a long runway.
a little bumpy coming down. There you are. Welcome to Prince Rupert, British Columbia. Thanks for flying with me today. If you want to follow along in my adventure around the world, my website is pixelazy.ca, P-I-X-E-L-A-Z-Y dot C-A. I'm tracking all my flights around the world. See you next time.